Good morning. It was the start of the new term. This is the last trimester before we graduate. Today is the first day of school after winter break. Everyone seemed the same. The break was only for two weeks. Well, what did you expect to change? Will you expect them to suddenly take up different clothes styling? Well, how could they really? I mean, they go to the same school, they got a uniform. Are you tan, Danzu? <laughs> the old students around us were laughing too. Nothing has changed except for one thing. I can't stop looking at Coco. I could confess her feelings for me on New Year's Day, but I rejected her. There's someone else who is special to me. I don't know if I'm in love with that person, but I'm definitely feeling something for Coco. I hadn't told anyone about this yet. That's because. What Taro loved Coco. This was very complicated for me. I was starting to have feelings for my best friend's girl. Well, you know it's a one sided affair on that one, don't you? I've been sure Wataru is in love with Coco, but Coco doesn't have feelings for him in that kind of way. But it's still, yeah. I couldn't shake off my feelings even though I knew that Wataru was in love with her. This is like a betrayal. This is kind of weird how suddenly he's developed a bit of a kind of, no man. I can't. He's my friend, man. I don't want to, like, betray our friendship with this situation. But he's always treating him like shit, usually, though. I have no idea what I should do about this. More than anything, I wondered what Coco was thinking. <laughs> Coco came close to me with a happy face. My heart started racing. She was so cute and smelled all clean like a fresh bar of soap. That's an odd description, like a bar of soap. Now I'm just pick picturing her just like... Yeah, that is a weird image, actually. Okay, picture Coco's face on a bar of soap with arms and legs. It looked like kind of Spongebob-ish in a way, only it's Coco. Now that is bizarre. She showed me what she got. Onikoroshi Mountain Ski Slope. It was a keychain with the image of a log cabin sign and a skier. That's so cliche. It is pretty cliche, really. I mean, when people go places, one of the main gifts always seemed to be a keychain. Coco rejected my comment and swung her arms around. Her habit of overacting makes her so adorable. Good grief, there he goes again! She didn't even realize that she was being teased. She got so excited whenever she re received those things. Ah well, that was one of her charm points. That's why Connie and Anzu always brought her back souvenirs. Coco backed away from me as soon as she realized that I was standing close to her. Her face went red and she acted all shy. I see where this teasing is going with this duo right here. Cold it!
Oh god, I just jokingly thought in my head. They're gonna. What if they, like. Just. And they did. Jeez, man. She shoved us a box covered in fancy wrapping paper. That's so cheap! Exactly, you know what we like to eat. Are we some bug or new species of fish? <laughs> that was a random laugh there, wasn't it, Wataru? He's just... he's nothing but a side character. How sad. A college Tsukunami and I nodded. How could you be so happy with a 780 yen souvenir? Well, I've started feeling bad for him. Stay strong, Wataru. This was our last term. We continued to enjoy the conversation. Hey, did you see Shirakawa-san? I saw it. What happened to her? Our classmates started noisily filtering into the room. What was going on with Shirakawa? I think it's obvious, you dense idiot. No, oi! Her hair, she cut her hair short. Wow, actually it wasn't obvious. I was just gonna... Assuming that, like... It was gonna be like... Something... Well, it is, I suppose, to do with that, isn't it? But not in that way, so... You got me there. What? She cut off her silky hair! Coco looked at me as if she's asking me something. I think I know why. It's probably that instant. I never thought she would actually cut her hair, though. Well, I guess we're the same on that one, then. Wasn't expecting that. Oh, look! The guy suddenly stopped talking. Anaka was standing by the door. I was not expecting it to be cut that short. It was true she really cut her hair. Her long silky hair was now so short that it splayed out lively at the edges. You know, funny thing is, I actually had my hair cut the other day as well. Although not really overly short, it's just maybe around shoulder length or a little bit below. Because before that, it was literally halfway down my back, almost. It's, it's like, really got a bit, you know, annoying after enduring being engulfed by it like it was some giant scarf all the time. It had been ten days since I last saw her since I rejected her. She was bouncing full of energy as if nothing seemed to be different. Well, except the haircut. Except for the fact that she cut her hair. <laughs> now she looks more like a tomboy. Hey. Yeah. You're really pretty, so you look good with any hairstyle. <laughs> she smiled joyfully. Hmm, try to picture Nanak with various different hairstyles. Hmm, she smiled joyfully. 
Her cute face nestled up to mine. She brought her cute pink lips against my ear. I was confused because I didn't know what she was getting at. She Was she going to tell me that she couldn't give me up? Nakurai. She denied everything and skipped away from me. Wait. Oh, 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 oh. Maybe. Maybe that's why. Maybe. Maybe. When she actually explains why she cut her hair, maybe that's what it would be. But I'm not gonna say what it is. And if it, when we get to that scene it wasn't what it was, then I shall say that. Well, I'll point it out when we get to that point, if I even remember by that point. Coco looked at me as she waved to Nanaka. It's nothing, I think. I finished my lunch early so I could meet Nanaka on the roof. She was already there at the handrail, gazing into the distance. I'm here. Nanaka turned around as she heard my voice. She looked happy to see me and I felt a little bad. It's nothing. Whoops, she muttered and sighed. I walked over to her. So, what's up? God damn it again. She bowed quickly. What? What did I do? Oh, me too. What? She called me out here to say that? All the guys would go crazy if they found out that I spent New Year's Eve with her. But if that's all it was, it wasn't about to, I wasn't about to object. I had fun too. <laughs> Awkward laugh. Here she goes. I was hoping she wouldn't say something like this. Naka, we've already talked about this. So what is it? What? I wonder if this is going to lead to any awkward tension in the coming scenes. Oh, that made sense. I felt the same way too. As uh, selfish as it was, I had really been hoping this wouldn't affect our friendship. It could never completely be the way it was. I just hoped we could still laugh together. I agree with you. <laughs> yes, you're important to me. <laughs> she responded to my words with surprise. I mean, you know... <clears throat> I'm sorry, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> What? What is it? What do you mean? She was right, I had to be careful not to get her hopes up. I stated my apology as uh, honestly as I could. I'm sorry. I was such a clumsy ass. And ironically falling for a clumsy girl. This is why you may always tell me I'm stupid and naive. I didn't want to do anything to hurt the knocker anymore. Well, you mean be the densest idiot that I've ever seen? You too. We bowed to each other. Huh? She ain't going down without a fight. Nanaka!
Nanaka laughed innocently and skipped down off the roof. Good grief. That's your favorite line right there. I can't even tell when she's joking. So I guess that's a similarity. Misinterpretations between the both of you. I was on the stairway cleaning duty. I finished up and headed back to the classroom. <laughs> Goku was the only person still there. Just seeing her set my heart racing. I felt strange, I was happy, but I also wanted to run away. What are you doing here? Working overtime? I spoke to her as casually as I could. <laughs> oh. I started putting away the cleaning supplies. There was nothing special about the request. We'd walked home together countless times before. And yet, something about the situation made me insanely nervous. Calm down, why am I feeling like this? Yeah. Was I wrong? Coco seemed nervous too. She blurted the words out. Then, just as suddenly, she panicked and covered her mouth. Obviously, I couldn't just tell her the truth. Goku and Nanaka were best friends, after all. She'd get mad at me if I told her that I had rejected Nanaka's commission. And then my relationship with her would be just as awkward as with Nanaka. At any rate, it wasn't something I should be spreading around lightly. Uh, nothing special, she just wanted to wish me a happy school year. I chose my words as carefully as I could. It skirted the truth a little, but at least it wasn't a total lie. Wow, I could tell she didn't believe me for a second. I had to fool her somehow. Actually, she wanted to thank me. Yeah, just for all the stuff we did during winter break. Goku nodded. This time she seemed to believe me one way or another. And it still wasn't a lie. It was true that Tanaka had thanked me after all. No problem, I feel the same way. We bowed to each other. When our eyes finally met, we laughed. Ha 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 ha. I know. We laughed like usual. But Coco's mood suddenly clouded over. You're right. I could just say I didn't, after all, I didn't know for sure that the reason was me. Even though it probably was. There was no way in hell I was going to tell Coco that, though. Then I might tell her something she shouldn't be hearing it from me. I don't know, she seemed normal, though. It was true. She had been as energetic and high spirits as usual. She said she hadn't given up on me yet. I didn't know if she was joking or not. Maybe she just wanted to change her look before graduation. That's what she was saying. <laughs> Goku started walking with an uneasy expression on her face. I followed her. I just didn't know what else to say. Picnic? 
It had been a while since we all had lunch together. It was a Kali and Anzu's idea. The Setsugenka girls had secretly conspired to prepare lunch for us guys. I appreciated their thoughtfulness. Yeah! <laughs> what the hell? Akane smiled. However, her smile seemed a little sad. What's the matter? I would say such a sad thing. That's the shitty thing about school really isn't it? You make friends in school but usually it tends to like they go off do their own thing, they they work and they don't have time for their friends and soon it just kind of drifts apart it's just like how tragic growing up really does suck doesn't it? <laughs> I wonder what was wrong with Coco, she seemed a little down. What's the matter, Coco? Did you poison one of the onigiri and how are you biding your time to see who eats it? Because you're secretly evil! That's not it. You know, it's just this whole situation that isn't actually the situation is reminding me of Yonderi Chan. Oh wait, that's me included. We're just kidding, Kokosama! Even she says it. <laughs> oh! Oh! Yeah, that's it. Spring was still far away. No, it isn't. It's pretty much just started the other day. But I felt so peaceful and warm when eating lunch with my friends. Have you noticed the transition between winter and spring? It's not quite that black and white, is it really? It's like, start of spring is usually pretty much the same kind of shit as winter, really. Even after graduation, I'd hope we never have to leave these days behind. That's what they all say, man! And then you... And then when you actually get this, like, further, the plot, like, when they go into, like, you know, they become adults, go into the world, work, start a family, all that, they barely interact at all! It's like a phone call every couple of years or some shit like that, it's just like... It's just... It's just... It sucks.